All right. Looks like we're all here. Not at all. We just came early to set everything up, since we happen to be free today. Kali put up the tent so quickly, but still managed to tie very sturdy knots. You can really tell that she's a professional. I didn't do much apart from passing materials around. <laughs> thanks. It's all thanks to Master and Sino. They taught me everything I know. What can I say? For a skilled adventurer, this is just another day on the job. Uh, are you quite finished? Or were you going to sing each other's praises till the moon rises? Come on, let's all sit down. That sunshine sprat was really very good. I didn't watch you cook it, but I believe that the prominent umami flavor of the dish owes itself to more than the fish alone. That's correct. Any further deductions? Let me think. The aroma was quite uniform. Unlike that of a spice blend, it was also unfamiliar to me. So I would venture that it was a Mondstadt specialty. As far as edible Mondstadt plant species are concerned, calla lilies are usually used in soups. So if I had to guess... Small lampgrass? That's right. I've long heard that Sumeru's fish with cream sauce is noted for its gentle texture, which brings out the tenderness of the fish. Here in Mondstadt, we're not quite as varied in the use of spices as in Sumeru, but the principle of bringing certain distinct flavors to the forefront through combinations of natural ingredients is well, very much the same. I liked it a lot. I'm curious as to the exact ratio of ingredients. I'll write a copy of the recipe for you. Would anyone like to try the nutrient-dense meal I made? I'll have some. What about you, Kale? It doesn't look like you've eaten very much. Is your appetite low at the moment? Uh, no. I just don't eat a lot normally. Hmm... Um, sorry. I didn't mean to make things awkward. Tainari. While we were on the road, we spotted something white, walking on two legs. Was that Paimon? Which day was this? Just after passing through Stonegate. Hmm. Uh, Sino, are you sure your eyes were working that day? Or maybe your hood was blocking your vision. Paimon always flies. There's no way she'd ever walk. Hmm. Is that right? I thought that you'd made me snacked on too many local... ground nuts. <sighs> no? Not funny? Ground, you know. As in ground up, but also the ground? Ground nuts make you fall to the ground. Uh, think of this as part of a process of getting to know Sino. On uh, the bright side, these jokes show that he thinks of you as his friends. Still, we could test the hypothesis. What hypothesis? That plant species indigenous to Mondstadt may have an effect on the motor functions of flying lifeforms. By your logic, wouldn't that mean that eating, say, Zytoon peaches? That would make a sick pine on peachy in no time or something. Hey! Not you two! <laughs> I think the Traveler and Paimon's conversations are more entertaining than Sino's jokes. Ah, uh, I see. You must have been keeping quiet about this grievance for quite some time now. You seem much cheerier now that you're here at Mondstadt, Sino. Actually, it feels like you're a completely different person. 
That's because I'm Sino the Adventurer. Hmm? It's not? In fairness, you only saw him in his work mode while you were in Sumeru. He's actually like this most of the time when he's in a good mood. Yep, it's true. Sometimes when he's eating, he'll grumble about how the bowl is too shallow for the amount of food it contains and other random stuff like that. I understand. Then allow me to reintroduce myself. Before, you knew me as General Mahamatra Sino. Now, please see me as Sino the Adventurer. Uh, yeah, so that's another thing he does. He'll keep repeating something he thinks is funny until you stop trying to resist. Hmm. So you have two different mental states? Almost like different phases of matter. Interesting. I want to learn to do that too. I think in your case, the two states we would end up with would be highly conscientious sucrose and <laughs> stupefied sucrose. Oh, by the way, was there any reason in particular that you chose Mondstadt as your destination on this occasion? Oh, well, Lisa once told me that the Windbloom Festival is one of Mondstadt's biggest events of the year. I wanted to take this opportunity to give everyone a Windbloom as a token of my heartfelt gratitude for everything they've done to look after me. Plus, it was a good chance for Kale to get out and meet some new people. Kale, Lily. What? Kale's Windbloom. Maybe she should call it a Kale Lily. It sounds very Mondstadt. There's also Kale Flower, which would technically make more sense. But somehow, it doesn't sound as nice. Moving swiftly on... Wow! He just completely ignored the joke and carried on the conversation. Uh, guess sometimes that's the only way forward. <sighs> Sumeru's been through some major changes recently, and things at work have only just started to calm down. I don't get many opportunities to take a vacation, and this was a chance to join Kale on her trip while also learning a few things about Mondstadt's flora and fauna that I'll be able to pass on to my peers and students on my return. Two birds with one stone. How about you, Sino? I came to ensure Kale's safety. That's just an excuse. Plain and simple. <sighs> also, there's the matter of a Genius Invocation TCG custom-made card back. Aha! So you did have an ulterior motive! Have you all played Genius Invocation TCG before? And that is why I am proud to call you my friend. When I first began contemplating getting a new card back, I asked around before eventually deciding to ask the legendary Mr. Kautz for guidance. A friend of mine, Sawada, whom I played cards with on occasion, had been to Inazuma for the Irodori Festival. He told me that Kalx was a Mondstadter, so I should try my luck there. Kalx? Uh, isn't that... You mean, he's a friend of yours? I see. So, you came to Mondstadt in search of Kalx. No, that is inaccurate. I came here principally to protect Kale. You most certainly did not. Kale's been here on the quiet numerous times, and this is the first time you felt the need to join. Not only me, same applies to you too, doesn't it? <laughs> if my writer friend were here now, I'm sure he would describe this curious coincidence as having the makings of a good story. It's always a pleasure to meet a fan. Oh, here he comes! Wait. You mean you're Mr. Calx? Having my new friends address me by my pen name feels... Uh, somewhat unusual. Please, just call me Albedo. Huh. So you're Calx. Sino's been talking about you non-stop recently. He's intent on getting you to design a bespoke card back for him. Uh, you didn't have to say all that. I don't usually take private commissions, but I believe that we are friends now, all of us. Our conversations have been deep and interesting, and Sino, 
Your passion for this game is indeed one of a kind. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> Obviously. And given that you've come all this way from Sumeru to see me, I'd be quite honored to take this commission. Wow, your teacher's so nice. I feel the same about yours. Um, well, they definitely have different personalities, but they're similar when it comes to their character. So, how much should I budget for the timeless masterpiece you will produce for me? Surely, timeless masterpiece is something of an overstatement. Any artwork fit to appear on the reverse of my card decks is by definition a timeless masterpiece, even if I do say so myself. Don't mind him. These TCG nutjobs are all like this. I see. So, this has an almost religious significance. Well, for starters, I'd like to hear a few more of your jokes. Uh, my jokes? You like them? I do. Really? I didn't see you laughing. Well, the joke's ability to induce laughter is a separate matter, but I certainly find them fun. If I might interrupt, does anyone else smell something strange? Ah! My nutritional meal! Will it be okay? Should we go over and take a look too? the base is burned. We can still use the cooking pot. It just needs a bit of a wash. Good thing Tainari's nose is so sharp. Has he been in this kind of situation a lot before? <sighs> I know, it's just... I'm sorry to disappoint Sino. I guess we'll have to do this again another day. Oh, yes. I'm not sure if you've noticed. Kali seems a little... depressed. I noticed she was in a low mood when everyone was talking. Remember that note she received? I was just thinking. I want to try solving this riddle and giving Kali the chance to accept the blessing. Oh, yeah! She's the one who needs your help. Exactly. Maybe she'll be willing to breathe into my test tube. But anyway, that can wait. As much as I'd like to make progress in my research, I'd prefer to see her smile. All right, we'll help out too. You will? Then tell me, honestly, do you think that this prophecy is for real too? Uh huh. Right. All right. Let's meet at the Alchemy Crafting Bench in the city. I've got some thinking to do in the meantime. We're back. Oh, what a shame. You just missed a joke about windmills. Stop, please. I don't need to hear it a fifth time. That bad, huh? Hmm. Well, now Paimon really wants to hear it for some reason. Didn't you say you want to see the Dragon of the East at some point? When are you going? Tomorrow morning. And you? What are your plans? I'll go into the mountains to have a stroll and collect a few plants as samples. Oh, uh, perhaps I could join you? I'll be looking for inspiration for these card back illustrations. Found you! I knew I was onto something as soon as I saw the fire. Wow, you have really sharp eyes. <laughs> That's an outrider for you. Uh-oh. Did we break the fire safety rules or something? Actually, you didn't. Strictly speaking, you should have reported your plans first. But since two of our very own alchemists are here, I'm happy to look the other way. <laughs> ah, yes, introductions. I'm Amber, and this is the Reconnaissance Company Captain Eula, a good friend of mine. Good evening. You are friends of Kale, yes? A pleasure to meet you. Oh, Amber and Eula. The pleasure is ours. I've heard a lot about both of you from Kale. Oh, really? 
All positive, I hope. You asked that last time, too! Of course it was positive! I'd say... We hear the latest news about you every time you write to Kale. <laughs> Glad to know we've made a good impression so far. Anyway, we're just here to collect Kale, so don't let us interrupt your chat. Come on, Kale. We're gonna take you to check out a few scenic spots. Okay, great! <laughs> Still as high energy as always. Hmm? You know Amber? Yes, we've met. She's Kale's most important friend. And for that, we are also very grateful to her. <sighs> That's Amber for you! Her outgoing personality means she can make friends with just about anybody! Hmm... It's getting late, and we still have a lot lined up tomorrow. I suggest we all head back and get some rest. All right, I'll start packing up. You're gonna get the tone deaf bard to check out that note, aren't you? <laughs> Guess Paimon knows you pretty well, huh? Knowing him, he should be hitting the taverns around this time. We can go corner him and make him answer our questions. Let's move! Oh, it's been a while. Hi, Mon Kaldic. Tone Deaf Bard drinking as usual. Put your drink down and get your game face on. We've got some important questions for you, mister. Uh, okay. So, what do you make of it? <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something? It's the Windbloom Festival right now. You can't just go around asking people for help so blatantly. Ugh. Well, if you won't tell us the answer, could you at least tell us if this thing's worth a shot? Sounds to me like you want a hint or two. <laughs> a fine answer. The person who wrote this prophecy is very powerful. If you manage to solve the riddle, good things are sure to happen. Also, I happen to know where this lantern is. Once you've found the four things, I'll even write the location down for you. Isn't that generous of me? <laughs> Whatever. We weren't expecting much from you anyway. You can get back to guzzling wine and blowing wind now. <laughs> oh, woe is me. Paimon sees me as nothing more than a drunken wastrel. There are actually a great many things that we bards are required to do. It just happens that enjoying life is the most important one. Once this is over, would you like to join me for a drink? You know, a favor for a favor. Flower that is not of this world. Hmm, not of this world. Sucrose! We've got some good news and some bad news. Which would you like to hear first? Um, let's have the bad news first, I guess. Huh? Really? Don't most people usually want to hear the good stuff first? Oh, alright then. Basically, we went to Windrise to divine the breeze. The wind said that the prophecy is real and that your idea is a really good one. That doesn't sound like bad news. So what's the real bad news then? Uh, Paimon is the bad news! <laughs> If it's not funny, then it's his fault. <laughs> it's fine.
fine. Well, that puts my mind at rest. Now, back to the other issue I've been mulling over. I was thinking about the flower that is not of this world. It could mean a human-cultivated variety that doesn't occur in nature. But that's basically claiming that it doesn't come from this world in the first place, when actually it's just a variant of an existing breed. So, the initial question is, can the flower's origins be traced back to a natural organism? If so, it cannot be correctly described as not of this world. But then, supposing we identified something outside of that category, whose job would it be to decide whether it belongs in this world or not? Then the question becomes, do of this world and from this world mean the same thing? Or is it deeper than that? Whoa, whoa, slow down! Paimon's head is already starting to spin! Okay, um... I did have one other line of thought as well. What about a flower created using alchemy? Would that be not of this world? Albedo may know the answer, but asking him right away would be like asking the teacher for the answers to your exam paper. It would render our search for the truth meaningless. I'd rather try and figure this out for myself. Could it be the wind bloom? Oh, now that you mention it, that's definitely a possibility. The wind bloom doesn't refer to a specific flower. Everyone defines what it means for themselves. In which case, the wind bloom doesn't exist in reality. <sighs> this does seem like a promising direction. I've made a note. Okay, I better go read up on this. Yay! Paimon was actually useful this time! Guess we have that sweet madame to thank, huh? I'll need some time to prepare. Could we meet up here in, say, two days' time? Sure thing! In the meantime, we'll also think about the other three riddles in the prophecy. But, uh, since we're really going for this now, shouldn't we say something to Kale about it? I originally wanted to leave it as a surprise for her, and I also didn't want to get her hopes up over nothing. But you're right, Paimon. I'll need to be careful how I word it. But I'll try to find some time over the next couple days to mention it to her. Alright, thanks so much. <laughs>